Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Welcome to another live interview session of Quality Early Childhood Care and Development. Prior to the live discussion, let me brief about our summit. So it's the International Conference on Quality Education 2023. This will be held on 21st June 2023 to 23rd June 2023 in Bangalore, India. Um, uh, this is organized by the South Asian International Association for Early Childhood Care and Development. So I would like to take this opportunity to invite all of you to join in this summit. Uh, today we have uh, an educator, a consultant, uh, Ms. Sheva Suhair uh, with this live interview. I would like to invite Mr. Janaka Kamalgoda, who is the president of South Asian International Association, OECCD, uh, in Sri Lanka. I would like to invite you, sir. I'm very happy uh, to participate for this uh, live into series. Uh, actually, as a South Asian region, uh, to all countries, all South Asian countries, we want to achieve uh, quality early childhood education. We, we want to achieve uh, sustainable development goals 4.2, quality ECCD. Then uh, mainly we have to share our best practices. We want to share our knowledge. We want to share experience, uh, expert knowledge of the Bhutan educators, from Indian educators, from Nepal educators, to update the quality of early childhood care and development. So uh, to make the good future for our younger generation, Firstly, we want to strengthen the early childhood education. Uh, we will conduct an uh, international conference on uh, 20th, 21st, 22nd in June uh, in Bangalore. Uh, parallel to the, our international conference, we have organized live, uh, live interview series. Through the interview series, we can share our knowledge, our best practices with the global society. Today we have a consultant, uh, the head of early childhood care department and senior lecturer in Amazon College, as well as uh, she is a business partner in Wisdom Club Preschool in Vallampitiya. Uh, today, we are going to discuss about motor skills. Uh, we are uh, here to have a brief introduction from you, Madam Shehwas, to help. Yeah, thank you, Nilanka, for your kind words. Yeah, I'm uh, just to tell you again, I'm Shevar Suher, uh, the head of department in early childhood, uh, senior lecturer uh, for the diploma courses, uh, which are TVC approved for the early childhood, and also a business partner uh, at a preschool, uh, Wisdom Flower in Vellampitiya. So uh, it's actually truly a privilege to be part of this conference, uh, which is going to be held in Bangalore, India. And also thanking uh, for the wonderful opportunity to have me here for this uh, interview session today. I also thank uh, Mr. Kamal Goda and uh, Dr. Deeraj uh, Marotha, who are the main driving force uh, behind this event, and to welcome me on board to share my knowledge on the topic uh, motor skills. Thank you very much, ma'am. So let's begin our interview session today. Uh, as I said previously, uh, today we are going to talk about motor skills. Yes. So as an early childhood development teacher or an, an educator, uh, how do you define fine motor skills? Uh, well, uh, fine motor skills, uh, if I have to explain clearly, it involves uh, small muscles uh, working with the brain and the nervous system. Uh, to control movements in areas such as hands, fingers, lips, tongues, and the eyes. So uh, the main part here is the both thing has to coordinate the fingers and the brain. So let me explain you with a uh, very easy example. If you're giving an activity to a child in a preschool, uh, like uh, pouring water from jug to jug. Uh, so when he's doing the water pouring, he gets the strength in his fingers, in his hand to hold the jug. Plus, he needs his brain to be coordinated. The concentration should come from the brain. Then only he will be able to successfully pour the 
water from jug to jug. Another example is uh, beading a chain. So when he's uh, doing a chain beading, he needs the alertness and the sharpness and the concentration from the brain where he's able to put the uh, beat the chain in the proper manner. To develop fine motor skills in the children at the early childhood stage. Yes, uh, definitely, Niranka, because uh, a teacher who is knowledgeable and knows the proper standards in the ECD will automatically and definitely realize the importance of the fine motor skills and therefore do many activities to develop it. So let me elaborate that to you with an example. Uh, like uh, we say, a teacher is the main person who lays the correct foundation for the child, isn't it? Right. So uh, my example to explain this would be, if you are building a house, definitely we will need uh, a strong foundation for the house. Right. So we uh, like allocate more time and uh, excess uh, matter for the foundation to be laid. So that will make the house withstand any calamities or maybe any disasters or obstacles which will come in the future because uh, the foundation of the house is very strong. Same way, a teacher should make the child's foundation strong by giving many activities as possible for the fine motor skills. So this will make them ready to face any challenges or obstacles once they move to the formal grade, once they go to the grade one, because the future lies in the teacher's hand. Yes. Then uh, now you said uh, we have to do many activities. Yes. And actually, why should we do so many activities to develop fine motor skill? Why is it so important? Uh, okay, so fine motor skills are important because it is uh, one of the main subdomains under the health and physical development. Uh, we call this as motor skills. So health and physical development are one of the main objectives of the ECD, uh, which is a component of the total development aspect. And we can also call it a holistic approach. So under holistic approach, we train the child in all the areas of development so that at the end of his preschool child, the product will be a totally developed child. So to be totally developed, definitely one of the aspects of the motor skills, that is the fine motor skills, should be developed. And another importance is that uh, our little children's hands of uh, ne uh, our little children, their hands need strength and dexterity. So if I have to explain what is dexterity, it's an ability to manipulate objects efficiently using the hands and finger muscles. So strength and dexterity is required to hold a crayon or a pencil or maybe draw or ultimately write when he comes to grade one. So as a teacher, what kind of activities do we have to do to develop fine motor skills in children? Yeah, uh, yes, Nilaka. There are many activities we can do for this fine motor skills. Like, uh, so a teacher should remember that the main target, because these are actually not fun activities, but our main target for these activities is uh, something where they use their fingers and the brain coordination. So we can do activities like giving them a Play-Doh, a clay, and uh, they can mold different, uh, uh, like, you know, I mean, uh, different uh, things like, you know, uh, fruits, vegetables, animals. So they like that. Then we can give them some dressing frames. Like, for example, we have uh, in the Montessori environment, the buttoning frame, the buckle frame, the hook frame. So these are very good so that they can strengthen their fine motor skills. We can also give them uh, finger painting or finger puppets where they are able to, you know, I mean, shake their fingers and uh, do some kind of uh, dramatization. Uh, another important thing is, uh, which we always give in our preschool is to give them to make collages. So collages, uh, what we do is uh, they use, you know, two ways where they are able to tear the paper. Right, And when they are tearing, their finger muscles are getting strengthened. And other ways, they can roll the papers. So those are really very good activities for that. Threading of beads, then uh, handworks, pasting pictures, uh, cutting papers, 
folding napkins. So these are, I mean, uh, very good activities for the fine motor skills. So uh, we can see in many countries, uh, ECCD teachers use natural materials, waste materials, and raw materials for fine motor activities. Actually, what kind of materials are we used in our country uh, for fine motor skills? Uh, yes, uh, so even uh, we preschool teachers in Sri Lanka, we also entertain and strongly agree in using natural and waste materials for fine motor skill development. So we also use those kinds of materials. Yeah, so is there any benefit uh, in using natural and waste materials for these preschool children? Uh, yes, definitely. There are ample benefits. For example, uh, if I have to explain you, uh, example, uh, we can take uh, natural clay, right? Uh, in Sinhala, we call it matty clay. Uh, that has uh, numerous advantages because uh, according to our research, uh, they have found out that this natural clay, uh, instead of giving them this artificial colorful clay, this natural clay has some kind of an anti-anxiety properties and makes them once they do activity with that, it makes them to calm and relax. So it has uh, a bacteria uh, which produces a serotonin in the brain stem by activating neurons. So this serotonin helps children to learn actively. And also it has no, uh, it has an organic composition of minerals. So these minerals and water helps the child uh, to calm down and it is good for their skin. Uh, well, uh, another importance, uh, I would say that is uh, anti-allergy. So there are no chemicals. So, uh, I mean, uh, the children will not have any allergies when once they work with this uh, natural clay. Uh, some other benefits are they provide more tactile stimulation to children to improve their hand and uh, finger awareness. And uh, they can stimulate uh, creativity, imagination, uh, the main thing is they are easily accessible and uh, you know it's low cost not low cost it is no cost at all right and uh, they can encourage uh, children to learn about nature and uh, you can take if you're giving activities for the mathematical concept sorting so uh, materials can be taken from the environment itself like we can take flowers we can take seeds stones pebbles so these things are uh, like, you know, resourceful. So they can find it quickly and uh, most of the problems and issues are solved. So these are the advantages. Yes, thank you, ma'am. Uh, when we are covering this fine motor skills, we can cover so many other domains and sub-domains exactly. as well as you said, yeah. regarding uh, collecting natural materials yes. and waste materials. So, uh, at present, we are concerned that collaboration is one of the most important skills. Actually, what kind of best practices do you use to develop these collaboration skills? Okay, uh, collaboration. So when we talk about collab collaboration, Ilanka, definitely I think uh, we should highlight the importance of the uh, 21st century skills. So uh, 21st uh, century skills, uh, these are the early years, which are the perfect time to support children's growth and development of the 21st century. So what is this 21st century skills is? There are four C's in this 21st century. And what are these four C's is? Collaboration, critical thinking, creativity, and communication. So with all these skills, a preschool child will be able to design a classroom with knowledge and create an inspiring learning environment where children can flourish, right? So uh, my best practices, like I would like to do more activities for the collaborative skills. I can give them group work where they come out with their own creativity. Uh, what is happening nowadays is Nilanka, like, you know, most of the teachers, they try to do the stereotype way of teaching. Like they want their teachers' ideas to come out. So it is actually, it should not be the teacher's creativity. It has to be the child's creativity. So the child has to work and come out with their own creativity. Then they can make up their own stories. They can use their own characters. 
then they can do some uh, art projects where they come out with their own masterpiece then uh, games they can uh, solve puzzles or stacking up things like example uh, like you know building a pink tower in a group they can get together uh, then lego sets then uh, like they can create their own piece of music so which will be able to uh, they can tune up in a group way and uh, some kind of you know you can give them a dramatic play uh, which is a very good example of uh, collaboration uh, now i want to ask you uh, we must develop communication skills of every child yes it is the most important skill in the modern world so what's the connection between communication skills and fine motor skills? yeah so again uh, when you are talking about the communication skills it's one of the 21st century skills right where we prepare the child to face the future because now it's it has become such a demanding world right so motor skills are very much important for a language development so the connection is that uh, we have something called the oral motor skills which allows the children to uh, practice similar movements of the mouth that are required for the production of the speech so through motor skills they are able to have opportunities for experiencing their world like you know uh, changes in their posture then locomotion and object manipulation all this allows the children to sit up move about not being lethargic and sitting in one place right and uh, they are able to experience in their surroundings items which previously they have used in a new manner with this new advances i think uh, children begin to develop and refine basic skills that are related so it could be like directly or indirectly so uh, therefore the development of communication and language there is a great link between both uh, when it comes to the parents what is the parents priority to develop motor skills in uh, your preschools you uh, do they also appreciate activities related to fine motor skills or do they expect more activities for cognitive development yeah actually uh, parents are the most difficult department to be handled and we have lot of experiences handling uh, different types of parents so actually we would say that uh, uh, like you know most of the parents uh, lack awareness actually uh, so it is uh, that you know the awareness should be given to them the understanding what kind of activities we do in the preschool and what is the importance of doing these activities so uh, parents should definitely support in the development of the fine motor skills after all preschool is a shared responsibility you know it is not only we are giving all the responsibility to a preschool teacher so it has to be the efforts have to be 50 50 uh, so parents should give opportunities to their children at home to practice this fine motor skills what they are doing in the preschool so then uh, a important thing which can arise is the child can get independent and always it was a golden rule of our dr maria montessori where she really wanted the independence the child to become independent and do work by his own self so there will be muscle strength coordination so uh, yeah parents immense responsibility is there so how the parent can help to develop motor uh, fine motor skills uh, i mean what kind of activities can a child do at home for well uh, i mean uh, it is in the parents hand to uh, make the home environment a learning environment the, uh, turn the home environment uh, into a proper learning enriching environment uh, what is happening these days is nilanka most of the parents who lack the awareness uh, they don't know to give the proper purposeful activities to the children at home so uh, they don't know how to you know they just kill the child's valuable time Right. so these are formative years no so we cannot waste their formative years so usually what they do is either they uh, put the on switch on the tv and keep the child in front of the tv so that they are busy with their household chores or they might give a smartphone in the child's hand so these are like you know i mean lack of awareness but uh, if we give an awareness to the parents and we can 
utilize the child to do something called the uh, EPL, Exercises of Practical Life, which was introduced by Dr. Maria Montessori. So these are like, you know, purposeful life activities. So uh, yes, so how can this be done? Simply, uh, we can make it interesting for them. Like, you know, come help me to set a dinner table, right? Holding a knife, fork or some spoon to eat or maybe uh, giving an activity where they have to pour their own water in the glass, right? Then, uh, okay, come and clean the table, help me to clean, clean the table. So they take a sponge and they are able to clean their own tables. Then uh, they can call the child to the kitchen and make activities a bit interesting, like, okay, you boil potatoes, you're giving the child to peel it, right? Or maybe, you know, eggs to peel. So these are very interesting activities. They can, you know, help stir a curry or maybe shake or maybe chop or cut or mix. So all these are, I mean, good activities where the child can do at home. Getting dressed up, buttoning and unbuttoning, the child's own dress is not a purposeful activity, but Nowadays, the mother thinks, no, it's better. I do everything. And at the end, the child becomes totally dependent on the mother. Yeah. Uh, up to now, we are talking about fine motor skills. Then concerning uh, fine motor skills, we also need to develop a child's gross motor skills. As exactly. Well. So yes. how much important is to develop the gross motor skills of a child? I uh, well, I would say that it is equally important once we are developing the child's fine motor skills, it's equally important to develop the child's gross motor skills. Uh, because both together, uh, we have to develop so that the child develops the proper uh, physical development. Yes, ma'am. Uh, so can you explain what is this gross motor skill? Uh, well, gross motor skills are skills that children develop using their whole body, right? So it uh, it is actually the large muscles uh, and they are the main thing which provide the foundation for developing the healthy bodies. So when the body is healthy, right? And uh, when the body is healthy and uh, the bodies are developed properly, then they are able to uh, socially and emotionally develop, right? So for example, when we talk about uh, a preschool environment, a preschool environment should definitely have an indoor and an outdoor. So indoor activities, we are able to do the fine motor skills. So whereas gross motor skills should be strengthened where they have the outdoor area. Uh, so when you're having outdoor area, so it is not only totally just an empty outdoor area, we need to have some play equipment and it is not necessary to have this uh, expensive play equipment, right? We can always have improvised items. Like uh, if you can't afford to buy a swing, yeah, definitely you can use uh, tires, right? So we have to uh, give them the gross motor skills somehow. Then you can have some boxes or you can make some small hillocks where the child will be able to ascend, descend, or, you know, just hanging about. So these are very much important to develop their gross motor skills. Yes. Uh, as you said that we have to have an indoor now to environment at our preschools uh, to develop these gross motor skills. So what are the activities need to develop the gross motor skills? In the uh, yes, uh, definitely the children love to do these activities. Jumping, throwing, climbing, climbing the stairs, uh, then uh, dancing, uh, catching a ball, uh, pushing a wheelbarrow, then uh, balancing on a beam. Uh, playing hopscotch, then uh, sidewalk, kicking, gardening, all these are activities which they already do. So when we are doing that, because these are their age where they will have that uh, thirst to do this. So when they are doing that as parents, we should actually not stop because they are practicing their cross motor skills. Yes, we'll develop first cross motor skills, so fine motor skills. So if you could clear this confusion, what develop first the cross motor skills or the fine motor skills? Yeah, uh, actually the gross motor skills develops first because we have a clear understanding that large muscles like the arms, legs and the trunks develop first. So we can see, right? I mean, the walking develops first, no? So we come to a understanding that yes, cross motor will develop first. Mm -hmm. After that, 
comes the small skills which require control and dexterity in the hands and those come later after the gross motor skill so example i can give you a baby will be able to uh, bring their arms together before they learn how to pass a toy from hand to hand so it the example easily tells us that the gross motor skill develops before then the fine motor skills and uh, what are the three main stages of motor development uh three main stages of motor development yeah so it can be categorized into three stages uh first could be the infancy right so infancy uh the age gap can be uh as soon as the child is born to about uh, one year then uh, second would be the childhood uh starts from one year to about say uh, 10 years right so there could be individual differences right so we can't give them a proper uh, age like you know at this age they can start off with these characteristics so it depends uh, from child to child right and the third category is the adolescence uh, which starts like approximately from 10 years up to the uh, up to 19 years Today, uh, we talk about uh, fine motor skills and uh, gross motor skills. Uh, at the conclusion, uh, what can we reach regarding the physical development of an early childhood stage? Uh, yes, so I would like to say that uh, one of the most important, uh, so not actually most important, I would say as equally important, right it's an equally important domain un under the total development so all the other domains are important and uh, i would say that you know all the domains are somehow interconnected right so interconnected means if you are developing the child's uh, physical development then only the child will be able to uh, be socially active and his emotions so once he's socially active his emotional development will take place once those part is fulfilled, the language development can take place. So a teacher should know that she should give importance to all the domains in a proper manner. She cannot just uh, I mean, take any one domain and develop it because all domains are somehow interconnected. So physical development uh, is very important and we have to, uh, the teacher has to have the proper knowledge. Uh, so what are the ways you're going to develop the child's uh, physical development. Uh, today, actually, we gain a lot of knowledge. Thank you very much, ma'am, for sharing your knowledge with us. So today, um, we have uh, Ms. Sheva Suhey uh, from Sri Lanka, who is a consultant as well as an educator, a preschool teacher as well as uh, the head of the head of early childhood department and senior lecturer in amazing college so i would like to uh, thank you again and again for sharing your knowledge with us and committing your valuable time uh, so i would like to invite you again if you want to say something at the end of our lecture uh, yeah uh, Lanka, like uh... I'm also so happy and uh, like, you know, excited. I was excited to face this interview. And because uh, a teacher, a educator, uh, a consultant, it is their duty to share their knowledge, right? So what, however much we share, I mean, it's like, I mean, uh, people gain the knowledge and it's like you, you feel that you're fulfilled, like after sharing your knowledge. So uh, it was a wonderful opportunity and I really thank uh, once again, uh, Mr. Kamal Goda and uh, Dr. Deeraj uh, for giving me this wonderful opportunity. And thank you so much, Nilanka, uh, for having me here on board. And uh, indeed, it was a wonderful time with you.